that good to her. And, I, and for me, I'm an ex-drummer, so the drummer is the leader of the band. If you don't have a drummer, you don't have a band. I conducted for Steve Allen for 16 years, and I always had a great drummer, otherwise I wouldn't have a band. But getting back to Sid, he really, and I gave Gary uh, a CD, he recorded about 18 songs with me. I was working, we, he worked with me at a place called the Downbeat Club. Yeah. And at the same time I was working, we were there for about two years now. Now you can hear a drummer play and you say, wow, that's good. But until you play with him, you won't know if he's good or bad. You've got to play with somebody every night. And every night Sid gave you everything. He was not only a good jazz drummer, but he was a good show drummer. Now, I, at the same time I was working the Downbeat Club, I was working with Benny Goodman doing a television show for about 37 weeks. And after the show was over, Benny asked me to go on the road with him, which meant I would have had to give up my little group that I had with Sid and, and a gentleman called Don Elliott, who were very important in my band. And so I told Benny, I said, listen, I can only go with you if you hire my drummer and, and my telephone player. So he came down here and played. And he hired Sid, and he hired Don, and we went on the road. Now, these are, none of these stories are fun, but not funny at that time. They ought to be now, because you all know Benny Goodman was probably the hardest guy in the world to work for, especially with drummers. We opened up at a place called the Colonial Tavern in Toronto. And out of these stories I'm gonna give you right now, about three of them, I label them all poor Sid. Of course, of course. We opened up the first night in Toronto, and Benny Goodman has a habit of picking on drummers. He loved Gene Krupa, and he couldn't fool Gene Krupa because Gene would give him, leave the bandstand, he'd just walk off. And anyhow, the first song, he would turn to Sid and say, your pedal is squeaky. And so Sid would get out his oil and start picking the pedal, and then the next song he'd say, hey, the snare drum's too tight. And Sid would be tight with the snare drum. By the end of the night, Sid was having a nervous breakdown, tuning, pedaling, hitting, running, doing, you name it. That was, so that was one thing. Finally, after the week, Benny got used to it and accepted it. Now, once again, poor Sid, we did a, a record date now. We went back to New York to do a record date. And once again, Benny kept saying, I don't like the sound of the snare drum. It sounds terrible. So Sid's trying to tune up the snare drum, going through it, because Benny Goodman was famous. You know, to, to Sid and I, that was like playing with God. <laughs> and Sid was having all kinds of trouble with this thing. And then there was a little intermission after Betty gave him all this hard time. And Sid was, had a trap case, like, you know, a trap case you put a drum in. And he was playing with the brushes. And Benny said, that's the sound I want, the drum. So Sid had to put the trap case with the drum and we did a whole record with him playing on a, play on, a, on, a, on a case, a suitcase. And it's called the new Benny Goodman sex in it, you'll find that right Now another poor Sid story, I'm not going with this. After Benny finally accepted Sid, everything was good, we opened, we were going to open up in Chicago, Benny's hometown for about a month in a place called the Blue Note. And poor Sid had an automobile accident and never got a chance to finish the job with Benny Goodman. So that was out. But Sid actually was really that good a drummer, when, once again I'm going to mention names that majority of people will know. Max Roach, uh, Sam Levy, Art Blakey. Sid was in that class playing for me. If, if he wasn't that good, he wouldn't have been in my band. He was there for about two years. And <laughs> one, one, one story that's, uh, once again, poor Sid. We got down about four o'clock in the morning at Birdland, and Don Elliott had a habit of flirting with every young lady in the audience. And Don, so they looked alike in some similar way. They had the same color hair, both young. And Don was flirting with everybody in the audience, every young girl. And there was a singer called Jackie Paris. And Sid Balkin and myself were standing out in front of a, a restaurant four or five, or five o'clock in the morning. And, and we're standing there talking. And Jackie Paris knew all the people from the mafia. He was not connected, but he knew all the people. Jackie could, could be a bad boy. 